question is how long did it take this cancer to spread so extensively? Anybody want to take a shot at, uh, at that, Dr. Fagbemi or Dr. Saha? Malignant mesothelioma is a cancer that in the beginning uh, is one that grows very slowly. In fact, uh, one option of intervention for those who present with advanced disease is observation, uh, which we just observe them without any intervention. And even in those patients, some of them would live without symptoms for up to 12 to 24 months after we found that they had a disease. So it is quite possible that in our patient, they might have had disease for, for almost a year or longer before it became so extensive. However, uh, the, the rate of growth coming from the past does not predict the behavior of the disease in the future. I mean, one should keep that in mind. I think the other problem with a disease like this is that the uh, patient really may not have any symptoms until it has been fairly extensively involving the, the lining of the uh, abdominal cavity. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just difficult to, to find this disease early. And it's a rare disease, as we've talked about, no good screening approaches to it. Uh, so. Would you please allow me to talk yes. and make a comment on this? Uh, you see that most diseases, abdominal diseases, present with either pain or indigestion or swelling or bloating and all those things. So, so th this disease has got a quite an indolent course, and this is a finding of surprise. Your patient presents with something else, and once they get exploratory laparotomy on the test, and they find the result. So the important thing in this is uh, this thing should be in the back of mind. And once you are taking a complete um, history of the patient, his occupation history and exposure to any toxic agents and things should be the part of it. And if, if a patient has a history of exposure to the asbestos, because that's one agent which has been implicated to that, that should be in the back of your mind. Uh, one thing, it's a, it's a paradox that uh, any operative intervention initially uh, kind of uh, limits the chances of a better outcome. And once you are doing uh, the biopsy or paracentesis, it should be as we suggest that it should be there as far possible in the midline. So even if something happens, then you can dissect that area along with that. Okay. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a surprise finding. Yeah, okay. Uh, another question relevant to, uh, to this disease and the patient we're talking about, uh, is the bowel put back in? If not, how does the patient uh, digest and move their bowels uh, afterwards? So you uh, might want to just talk about bowel continuity and what was left out. And uh, yeah, uh, that's a very important question. And that comes to the point that uh, uh, when I talked initially that you have to assess at the very beginning of the disease that if you, everything is resectable. But once you resect it, whether he will have a worthwhile life and uh, lifestyle, that has to be considered and all these issues have to be discussed with the patient up front. Our aim is to maintain at, at least a minimal length so that uh, nutritional needs of the patient is, is, is met. Uh, yes, you cannot put the bowel back. There's no way, uh, like in some kidney diseases, kidney stone disease and some renal uh, cancer cases, they do the bench nephrectomy and put the things back again. That's not possible in this disease. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, we have a lot of cases, a lot of questions.